Um, so this, uh, this slide here tells you what those use cases were. Government operations, we had censors, National Archives and Records Administration uh, as, as particular examples. We had um, commercial finance backup, citation analysis for the company Mendeley, Netflix or streaming, uh, streaming video, web search, um, cargo shipping as in UPS, an example of the Internet of Things. And the whole issue, an important area of um, materials and manufacturing and the aspect of digital technology there. Defense covered sensors, surveillance, situation assessment. And a key feature of that, which I already mentioned, was the importance of images. There's several important uh, defense uh, sensors that gather very large images, which have huge, significant big data challenges. Healthcare and life sciences, we saw medical records, uh, different ways of analyzing that data, very ingenious analytics. Pathology, the study of, um, of images, <coughs> the actual taking the images of, in, by, by uh, radiating um, um, biology samples. Genomics, obviously, is a, we know how, how you know, sequencing the gene has made such progress. Epidemiology, the study of, um, of disease and populations, the impact of that on population, or just the study of populations and how they react to crises like uh, terrorism and things like that. That involves making models of people's activity and uh, that, that data, a very rich set of uh, generated data. And we also had an application in the biodiversity area. In deep learning and social media, we the the use cases describe identifying faces, driving cars, geolocating images, analysis of Twitter, crowdsourcing, the general area of network science, and uh, an important, a nice uh, NIST example where uh, they they are actually responsible for many benchmark data sets, such as in uh, translation, um, image identification, and things like that, and how how those uh, Benchmark data sets are used. In the ecosystem for research, this grab bag, we have things about metadata, um, collaboration, which you must do to uh, do any large big data problem, language translation, and uh, analysis of um, literature, and also just a rather different case, namely the actual uh, light source um, beam lines, which are used for. Um, many of these image-based applications. In astronomy and physics, well, there was a lots of very interesting work on sky surveys, gathering lots of data, comparing data taken at different wavelengths, comparing it with simulations. We had a couple of accelerator applications, one from Japan and one from the big large hadron collider of Sun. Earth environmental and polar science are noted for studying we are three-dimensional um, manifestations, and that's done by scattering radar in the atmosphere to the study of the atmosphere, looking at data related to earthquakes, what happened after an earthquake, or what, what might be a signal of earthquakes, uh, observing the ocean and the earth, um, looking at ice sheets to try to understand uh, why what's happening to the North and South Poles, mapping the earth with radar, uh, climate simulation, the data, big data can come not just from observation, it comes from large computers. Nifty example of how uh, NASA is looking at uh, atmospheric turbulence with images and identifying uh, uh, and, and identifying uh, interesting features which are used then to um, help pilots avoid them. Uh, a lot of work in the environmental area, but linking sensors and all the different components together, microbes to watersheds. And Meriflux and FluxNet are big sensor networks. And then our single energy application is involves a very critical one, the smart grid. A very, very important uh, example of how information technology and data can potentially make a big impact to everybody. Here is an example of one of the tables in the final report. <coughs> it 
if we look across here, each of these rows is a summary of some information about one of the use cases. So here we have use case 23. Bother. Uh, use case 23 is uh, documented in um, document 172. It's about epidemiology. The data size is, um, remember here we have the, the uh, label is at the bottom, volume 100 terabytes. Here is the velocity of the data, the variety of the data, the software used as one uses classic HPC software, Charm++ and MPI. And then what type of analytics is needed here? We're doing simulations on synthetic population. The big data is the synthetic population. Here is a related um, um, population study, social uh, contagion uh, modeling of planning how to deal with uh, terrorism or events like 9-11 and things like that. Biodiversity is well known to be an important issue. Life Watch is a European project in that area. And so we have its properties here. It uses relational databases. So we had all sorts of technologies here, not just um, uh, not just uh, modern cloud technology, but also traditional technology, because you need this. It's not, there's no one solution to all problems. Here we have deep learning, which involved GPUs and high performance computing. To, um, and it has the particular application, say, designing a self driving car by letting, letting it learn from lots of images, could involve 100 million images. Um, here we have an application, in, you know, here's a document here, 171. Uh, this involves potentially huge numbers of, of images, then the ones uploaded to Facebook and Flickr and, um, and Snapchat. And of course, we know that changes very rapidly. We have 500 billion now. There are 500 million uploaded every day. And uh, there are all sorts of little uh, Variety there, and this is trying to geolocate all these images by matching them, and that's effectively solved as the analytics. The large scale nonlinearly squares and um, support vector machines, and it uses MapReduce as the actual software. So this is so this is just a, this is a summary, and it is a summary in terms of. Features, it's just a few of the key features, six of them, five of them, I should say, or five analytic features, and then one label feature. And uh, here we have the final one is the Twitter analysis, using Hadoop uh, HBase with indexing added to it. And it compared various forms of NoSQL, including an HBase was found to be the most appropriate. And it's looking for anomalies and communities from Twitter data. So here we have um, this. There's a lot of information here, and this is just meant to give you a feeling as to what you can find out.